Hi, this video will show you how to make a solar panel to help heat an above ground swimming pool. Hi, we're going to show you how to build your own solar panels to heat an above ground swimming pool. Our swimming pool is approximately 16 feet in diameter. Uh, and so these will be solar panels to heat that water. So the first step was to purchase a 4x8 sheet of green treated plywood. And Jim, what were the rest of the materials? Four 2x2s. Four 2x2s that were cut down. And as you can see, I'm just going to go in here. When they're assembled, you have to leave room right here. This is where the hose is going to come in. We'll get to that in a minute. The next step was to drill a hole in the center. And what's the diameter of that hole? Two inch. Approximately a two inch hole. Um, so right now for this step, we're going to prime everything with just regular primer, uh, two coats, and then after that has been completely dry, the next step will be to paint it with flat black paint. Okay, so the panels have been primed with two coats of primer. And now on to the next step, which is to paint them with the flat black paint. And those will get uh, two coats at least of that. Okay, so each of the panels have now been primed with two coats of primer and painted with two coats of the black paint. And so the next step will now be to install the black tubing um, that's going to be coiled and spiraled around the center of each of the panels and that's what the water will actually flow through. Okay, we're now at the next step of building a solar panel heater for the swimming pool. The basic board has been built and primed and painted black and now the next step the next step is coiling the hose. So Jim, why don't you tell us what you're doing? About 100 feet of black vinyl hose, half inch black vinyl tubing. We kind of stretched it out in the sun here to let it warm up so it's easier to coil. I basically bought some hose clamps. We're going to clamp them down every so feet just to kind of hold it in place. Coil all of this hose up into this tube. So starting with the outside perimeter, you just keep going round and round and round. What we did was we left a little opening here for the hose to start. And then when it ends, it'll go through the hole. In the middle. Connect around to the next one. Excellent. All right. More on the next step. Okay, so it looks like you're starting the coiling round and round. You've got the very first row of the corners anchored with these, um, what do you call them? Little plastic clamps, clamps. Little plastic hose clamps. But as you're coiling it around, I'm noticing that the hose uh, doesn't want to just stay perfectly coiled, it's bulging out. So, what are you doing for that fix? We're just going to use little twist ties to hold it in place temporarily. Just temporarily. So, then after it's completely coiled, then what will you do to hold it all in place so the coil doesn't bulge back out? Um, I have a black 2x2 two two that it's going to go across the middle here to hold the whole thing in place. The whole coil, okay. And then we will put plexi over the whole top of it all. Okay, so it'll prevent these sides from bulging out and coming out. Okay, that makes sense. So as you're coiling, just this temporary fix of using twist ties, just big giant bread twist ties to temporarily hold them in place. That's a good idea. All right, we'll do more on the next step. Here's just a example of putting down these little hose clamps. Let's show what the hose clamp looks like. They're okay. called cable clamps. They're actually for hooking, laying down electrical cables. For electrical cables. They're, they're plastic. Half, yep, they're half inch vinyl, so you can just wrap really nicely around the tube. Okay, so it goes all the way around the tube. Yep. And then you're just going to screw it in. Very simple, very easy. And then once uh, the tubing is all down, those twist ties will be removed just because of their metal content in there and we don't want them to take the risk of them heating up and having a problem doing some kind of damage to the, to the plastic, the vinyl tubing. Here's 
come six in the pack for like a buck and a half. Yeah. It's relatively inexpensive. And uh, theoretically, you, you could skip the twist tie step, but what we found as we were doing this is that sometimes the coil got uh, a little bunched up or there was a problem when we had to kind of, um, we had to kind of pull, pull a section or two of it apart and recoil it. And so that was a lot easier having the twist tie to deal with and just to adjust it as opposed to then, you know, kind of finalizing it with putting these clamps down. Okay, so we did the first 100 feet of this tubing, and basically this is how much it's uh, covering in here. So now we're going to connect the second 100 feet of tubing using this brass connector. Um, ideally, if you can if you can find 200 feet of this tubing all together, that that's great. Um, for something this size, that's what you need. Otherwise, you have to uh, you have to use this connector. So. One end of the connector, it's pretty simple. One end of it just gets shoved into the tube. The other end gets shoved into the other side. And then what we'll probably do, what I, I'd like to do is to um, come back and just put some a little silicone sealant around it just because of expansion and contraction due to the, the amount of heat that's going to be going through it, just so there's, there's no leaks because this is going to be sealed inside. So that's pretty simple. Clamp that down. And then we'll come back and do a little silicone on that joint. There you go, easy. Okay, so 200 feet of the tubing has now been coiled. And the next step, Jim, is what? Put this brace in to kind of hold the uh, coils in place. And it's also going to serve as a place to help screw down the plexi that's going to go over the top of it. Excellent. Looks good. And so the end of the tubing has gone out the hole in the middle, and it'll, it'll come out the other side. And here's the completed solar panel project. There were a few modifications that we did. What we ended up doing was adding in um, those plastic clips, and we put one on just about every single row of the tubing for... Um, for both sides. Now the bottom section, see we're going to mount this more vertically, um, well, somewhat of an angle, but so we didn't want the tubing falling down once it was in a more upright position. Um, so those were added and also, you should be able to see them, are these black zip ties. Just got a bag of inexpensive black zip ties and tied off probably, as you can see, um, it's encompassing maybe four or five tubes at a time. And that just kind of adds to the stability. You can see the zip ties throughout. It kind of just keeps them, keeps them all together. Then the last uh, final step was to add, um, the last time in the last video we saw just the one cross beam, we added the other two cross beam sections just in order to mount the, the acrylic, the plexiglass. Um, and because you're not going to see our solar plant panel where we're going to mount it, we got two pieces of plexiglass and cut it um, and mounted it on there. As you can see, we pieced it together just because a 4x4 four four or, or greater piece of plexiglass was much more expensive than buying a 3 foot by 4 foot. So if you don't care what it looks like, then definitely get... Um, you know, you can piece the, the, the plexi together, it's not a big deal. But if your solar panel is going to be somewhere out where, you know, where you're going to see it, 
you might want to spend the extra money and just get one uh, solid sheet of plexi. The price does go up quite a bit um, once you, um, you know, once you get the larger pieces of plexi. Um, so that's it. So the next uh, final step before we actually mount it up on our roof, um, what we're going to do is test it. So that's using a pump, just a, a pump like you would use a, a good size pump. Um, that you use maybe like in a water, a water fountain and a water feature. And we'll run the water through it and uh, on a sunny day just to verify that it is heating the water and that there aren't any major leaks inside, anything like that, um, that, any, that everything is working properly. And then once we establish that, then we'll do the final mount. Um, we're mounting it up on a screen porch roof, kind of up and out of sight, and where it's going to get full sun for almost the whole day. You're definitely going to want to put this in a place where it's going to get sun for most of the day. Otherwise, it's it's you know, basically defeating the purpose. So that's it. That is the simple, relatively inexpensive homemade solar panel to heat an above ground pool. One final note for attaching the plexiglass. What we used, and we've used this before on another project, are these sheet metal screws. That's what was recommended to us at Home Depot when we purchased the plexiglass. And what you're definitely going to want to do is pre-drill into the plexiglass first, um, which is, you know, regular small drill bit, and then uh, use the sheet metal screws to screw it in. Otherwise, if you don't pre-drill, you're going to risk cracking the, uh, the acrylic, the plexi. We've got the solar panel hooked up and, and connected to the water pump. There's water going through it um, to test it, make sure there's no leaks, everything is functioning properly, and it is working. Um, it's the beginning of June here in the north, and this summer it's very chilly. Today is probably only not even 60 degrees. Um, however, with the sunshine, the water um, coming out of the panel is is warmer. It's definitely warmer than, than the pool temp temperature water. Um, so now uh, what we'll do is we will proceed to um, finish the construction on the second panel because really in order to effectively um, provide a good water temperature you're going to need both panels um, and so what we'll do then is um, after the second panel is constructed the water the tube that goes out through that middle hole that tube will connect to the second panel It'll, the water will run through that after it's been kind of initially heated a little bit. It'll, it'll run through the second panel. It'll get even, even warmer. And then that return hose will go from the second panel, will go back into the pool um, for the um, extra warm water. And that's it.